Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. Mahinda Rajapaksa, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka since 2019, resigned on May 9th, 2022. Gotabaya Rajapaksa, the President and his brother, continues to stay in office still under very precarious conditions. This after more than six weeks of protests in Sri Lanka, at the capital and at cities all around the island. The Rajapaksas have been blamed for mismanaging the economy to the point where it went into a free fall at the beginning of this year, and the Sri Lankans were unable to find food, milk, medicines, or even gasoline, petrol, as imports became scarce and prices rose by 300% in some of these commodities in a matter of months. Power cuts have been long and often. Net foreign assets have plummeted from around almost 800 billion in 2020 to now a negative trillion in 2022, according to a report in the London Times. Inflation overall has been above 20%, among the highest in the world right now. And foreign exchange rate has also dropped to almost half of what it was at the beginning of 2022. Now, where did all of this go wrong? To begin with, soon after they got elected in 2019, the government decided to reduce the income tax rate, which was already one of the lowest in the world. That really dropped the revenue stream. Second, the government also decided that they would uh, take a very, very radical view about uh, organic fertilizer versus chemical fertilizers and decided to ban chemical fertilizers at the stroke of a pen. That really messed up the agricultural sector and agricultural production dropped drastically. Another thing that the government did was to really, over a long period of time, and this did not happen only in 2022, but over the last 10 to 15 years, have embarked on investment projects uh, that many of them were really what one calls vanity projects, developing place called Hamban Tota, which is the uh, family township of the Rajapaksa clan, uh, building an airport, building a port, and both of these things with the help of the Chinese, and uh, found that really nobody was using any of these things, right? So they also owed a lot of money to the Chinese. And uh, about more than a year ago, they had to renegotiate the, the finances and the Chinese ended up uh, getting a 99 year lease on a huge part of the land in Sri Lanka. Tourism dropped because of the pandemic and because of war and other incidences, the price of oil increased and as a result, energy became really, really expensive in Sri Lanka. Of course, there was also a gross mismanagement of the entire economy. And on top of that, it was very clear that the Rajapaksas were also truly corrupt. Okay, And this was something that has been documented by organizations all around the world. So as a result, the Sri Lankan economy is in a really severe uh, free fall. And finally, trying to negotiate with the IMF for loans so that they can uh, see this crisis through. The same people who are protesting today are going to be the ones affected adversely, even under IMF policy, until the IMF uh, comes up with a way to provide transfer payments for the poorest of the poor. So all of these things are getting negotiated in the meantime. India is also jumping into the fray and trying to find ways of helping Sri Lanka 
by providing bridge loans. China is also involved with some kind of renegotiation of their debt. At the end of the day, a country that was seen as the pearl of the Indian Ocean with uh, a reasonably high per capita income, at the highest literacy rate among all the South Asian countries, and an educated uh, population has come to a really, really bad situation. Of course, a lot of people blame this condition on uh, voting in uh, this corrupt Rajapaksa family. And the only reason the Rajapaksa family was voted in was because they managed to uh, stop the civil war and beat the LTTE, which was uh, the Tamil Tigers, the minority group that was uh, uh, fighting to get autonomy for a separate part of the country. The Rajapaksa, especially Mahinda Rajapaksa, who just resigned, uh, was in charge of destroying the LTTE and in the process also uh, killing off uh, tens of thousands of civilians. So there is a court case uh, in the International Court of Justice and there's all these petitions at the United Nations to look at what happened in Sri Lanka uh, as war crimes. So that may be another reason why even though Mahinda Rajapaksa resigned, uh, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa uh, is uh, go going to find it difficult to actually resign because if he and the rest of the Rajapaksa clan uh, leave their power and their stronghold on the Sri Lankan economy and, and polity, there is a high likelihood that they will be prosecuted for war crimes for what they did to the Tamil minority.